My name is Jeff Goodell, and I wrote How to Cool the Planet, Geoengineering, and the Audacious Quest to Cool the Earth's Climate. So one of the reasons I wrote the book is because I wanted to get this idea out into public domain, into conversation, into, I wanted it to be taken sort of out of the closet of scientists and policymakers who had been thinking about it, knowing that it's within our technical capability to manipulate the Earth's climate on this kind of grand level, and get it out there for public discussion for, so people can understand it, think about it, begin to, to um, develop some kind of framework for regulation, for legal issues, for moral and ethical issues that this brings up. Uh, I wanted this to be uh, talked about because I think the worst thing that can happen with an idea like geoengineering is it for to be, to be something that is discussed in the back room among policymakers and scientists. So I started writing this book thinking that geoengineering uh, is a crazy idea. And I ended it two and a half years later thinking that it's still a pretty crazy idea, but one that we may end up having to use since we've pretty much failed at our other efforts to deal with the problem of global warming in a more straightforward and rational way, which is by cutting emissions. Among the many things that concern me about this idea of geoengineering is the idea that it will be sold as a kind of diet pill for all of our energy and climate problems. That instead of doing the hard work of reinventing our energy infrastructure and shifting away from fossil fuels and quickly to renewable energy, the fossil fuel industry itself might take up this idea and say that you know, we, can, we don't really need to switch so quickly. We can just you know, put some sulfur in the stratosphere and reflect away some, some sunlight and take care of this whole global warming problem that way. It'll be sold as a sort of technological quick fix. And we all know that Americans love quick fixes. And that's one of the things that really scares me, because if that ends up being what happens, we're really in deep trouble. And so my challenge was to give it a kind of gravity and weight that uh, it doesn't have at first glance. And the way I decided to do that was really to take head on the, this question of, who are these scientists and people who are talking about this idea, and are they crazy? Uh, I, and I thought that exploring the motives and lives and uh, science of these men and women themselves would be the best way to get at this idea. So scientists haven't really wanted to talk openly about it, and one of the things I hope my book has done is made it okay uh, to talk openly about it. I mean, I, I got to be the one out there uh, you know, uh, breaking the ice a little bit. And um, I think that there's been much more public discussion about this. I think that you've seen much more coverage in the popular media about this now. Uh, I think that even some of the most serious policy papers I've seen uh, coming out recently are beginning to take geoengineering seriously as part of the toolbox of how we might deal with climate change. I think that getting an award like this really shows the importance of taking on big subjects. That this is a climate change and our energy problems are a huge subject, the, perhaps the biggest challenge that civilization has ever faced. And I think that it's hard for journalists to grab their, bend their mind around that. And one of the things I feared with this geoengineering book is that it was too big. But I think in some ways winning this award shows me that taking on big subjects and trying to think big about big ideas and big problems uh, has a kind of reward. And um, this winning the Grantham I think is part of that.